am Natasha Marchevka, and I'm a freelance voice actor. Um, I'm Canadian. I was born in Toronto, and I've lived all over Canada, actually, and in a few different countries. So um, I'm super honored to be asked to join this group um, to talk about inner wisdom. Um, I love the idea of knowing that we have inner wisdom and um, thank you for creating this project, Bernice. So, um, what does a voice Thanks actor do? It's, uh, when I tell people what I do, especially if I say I do voiceovers or voiceover actor, voiceover artist, there's so many terms. Most of the time their eyes will glaze over because it, there's no context. It doesn't mean anything to people. Um, so um, someone in voiceover can do any number of things. So if you hear a voice on a train, a subway, an airplane, if you hear a voice on commercials, of course, um, for business training, those kinds of things are what I do. Um, not necessarily a, a plane. I would love that gig, but um, I do a lot of corporate business narrations. So if someone's training or they're doing a conference and they need an overhead voice or um, they are doing a branding video that's going to be on their website and on YouTube, those are the things that I do. And I also do a lot of retail commercials um, on television and on the radio. So I've been doing this for almost 14 years and I was blessed to have it suggested to me um, from someone at a radio station that I worked at 15 years ago. Um, so I have a degree in broadcasting and I also have performance experience as a singer. And so you'll find that there are people in voiceover from different kinds of communities, areas, whether it's broadcast or acting, theater, um, or have communications degree. So um, that's what I do. I've had the business for almost 14 years and I do it at home and I get sent scripts from all over the world, mostly North America, but all over the world. And they send you the script and you do the audio file and you send off the audio. And it's a really amazing job for someone who wants to work from home and has the business skill to back up their business and the marketing savvy to be able to get business because that's um, 80% of the job is marketing yourself. Um, so I hope that was clear about what I do, but yeah, that's about the size of it. I love I'm a it. thinker and I'm also a speaker. And so I think a lot about um, my business, how to make it work, how to survive, and then also how to share with other people. Um, so I would love to share with you today my inner wisdom about how I've kept my business afloat or grow and grown my business and survived the years of being in isolation and, you know, as an entrepreneur of any kind, um, graphic designer, photographer, there's all kinds of creative freelancing businesses where people can work from home or work sort of out on the field on their own and, and, and work for themselves. Um, and I think without inner wisdom <laughs> of some sort, I don't think I would have survived. And of course, great support, great support networks so, you know, when you need help, you reach out. And that's part of my tips. But um, I think it all comes down, I have a, a whole list of things I, I would love to share, but it really comes down to trust and faith um, that everything that I'm going to share, but you kind of resonates with someone that you have the faith and the trust that, that this is true. So um, my first bit of wisdom is um, do not personalize. And um, I think it's interesting for me because I tend to personalize in my personal life, but for my business, I've always known somehow that um, I didn't need to personalize that when people don't hire me, it's not about me. It's really about their creative choice. And that's a pretty subjective thing. So if they don't like the sound of my voice or it just wasn't for the job, they might have liked it just fine. But they're looking for what they're looking for and it might not be me. Um, and that was always fine with me. One of the reasons I think is because there's a lot of work in my industry, um, but there's also a lot of competition. So I've learned not to personalize. 
I've learned also that the winds of change blow all the time. I use that phrase for myself and always have in my business because I really recognized how um, when I'm, I am working for organizations and corporations, some really big television conglomerates and some um, tech companies and all kinds of different businesses, things change. People retire, people leave. Um, sometimes I'm recommended by people and sometimes I'm not and sometimes jobs end and, and another door opens and it, they always just keep opening. So I really trust that the winds of change blow all the time. So when someone says, I'm sorry, we can't continue our relationship for whatever reason, I don't personalize and then I know that another door will open. So um, yeah, those are really sort of faith-based bits of inner wisdom that I have for, for in general for freelancers. So one of the things though that I do share with um, different groups that I speak to, there's the, those faith-based or trust-based beliefs, but then there's doing the work. So when someone asks, uh, I've been on podcasts where they say, well, what's your one bit of wisdom? And my one bit of wisdom is do the work. And so with that, when it comes to voiceover, for example, but it certainly would relate to other freelancing genres, is that you need to know where you stand in the development of your craft in order to know the next step. So often voice actors, especially when they're new voiceover talent, when they're sort of new and early on in their career, I don't know what to do, I don't know what to do. Well, you need to know yourself and you need to know um, where you stand in the marketplace. And so you hire good coaches to tell you, and of course, everything with a grain of salt, but you can't navigate um, a business as an artist, let's say, and you know, that's hard because artists, it's a it is subjective objective, that's difficult. But if you're running a business, you know where you, you stand in the marketplace in order to be hireable. And so you have to figure out where are the holes creatively or in my craft that I need to assess or address in order to lift myself to the next level to be more hireable. So I'm not talking about artists who are doing art for the sake of art. I'm talking about those who are selling themselves as a business. Um, yeah. So, and then there's the idea also of being really specific about what you want to do so you can free yourself from the burden of doing everything and needing to do everything. So even in voiceover, I mean, especially in voiceover, because that's where my expertise is, there's a lot of genres. There's animation and gaming and corporate work and commercials and museum work and telephone work. Um, figure out what you're good at and what people are hiring you for or what they might hire you for and focus on that. It, it lifts the burden of having to do everything. Um, and some people, you know, they say they want to do every, well, that's fine. Try it. Train and then know where you are most hireable in order to move forward as a freelancer. The reason for choosing freelancing is multifold and I think everyone needs to make their own choice and that sort of runs through this, all the tips that I'm going to share, but um, I chose freelancing because I didn't enjoy working for other people at a business, at a corporation that really didn't suit me and I didn't realize that for far too long, unfortunately. Um, but the freedom of um, setting your own schedule and answering to yourself, of course you have clients that you have to answer to, but you're running it in the way that you want to run it. And that was really, really important to me. Um, voiceover itself, I'm very fortunate. It lended my skills lended to that business, and we are a group of amazing, interesting, diverse people um, that both have um, an artistic slant, creative abilities, but also business acumen and um, professionalism. And so you have to have all of that. And I just happen to have the right pieces for the puzzle. And so that's kind of why I chose it. Um, and why anyone chooses it, I always say you really need to dig deep and 
look inside because it, although there's a lot of work, there's a ton of competition and it's not easy. There's nothing easy about it. Um, it's, it's a lot of work, but if you are good at it, it can be amazing. There's other f things I find that sort of are in line with that. And that is um, no, find your line, lane, find your lane market wise, marketing wise. So you found out where you stand in the market, but marketing wise, what are you good at? Are you good at hosting podcasts? Are you good at social media? Are you good at writing and therefore blog blogging? You don't have to do everything. You don't have to do every social medium. You don't even have to do social media if you don't if it doesn't resonate with you. Um, I like this example. I'm really interested in how people market them, their businesses. And um, when I lived in Nova Scotia, um, I went on a dinner cruise in St. Margaret's Bay. And, you know, it's a small business and I'm really fascinated by how it's full and busy and hard to get reservations. Their only marketing was Groupon. And they found their lane. So they, you know, priced it appropriately and gave these discounts and people would find them through Groupon. They didn't have to do anything else. No newspaper, no radio, no even online stuff. And I loved that they found their lane and they didn't feel like they're not doing enough. It supported them fully and filled the boat and um, day after day. And then they had their regulars and word of mouth. But to me, in the amount of choices that we have, it's really important to know what's going to work for you, what's worked for other people, but in terms of the, the career you're in, but then in terms of your personality, what do you want to do and what do you not want to do and sort of cut ties with feeling like you have to do everything. Um, having said that, you also want to challenge yourself when it comes to building your business and not be complacent. We touched on this already, but if you are sitting back and waiting for someone to hire you, it is absolutely not going to happen. So um, you figure out those things that you need to do that will grow your business in a way that's comfortable for you. So if you want to do something um, from home and you want to have the ability to move different countries or city, well, there's different things. If you want to move cities, um, I love digging in. I love getting to know cities. I love, I actually love networking. Um, I love getting to know people. So in terms of moving from city to city, uh, uh, my suggestions are to jump in with both feet in terms of meeting people at, um, oh gosh, the word has slipped my mind, but those business builder type organizations in every city in, in North America, at least. Um, it's, there's, you, you lose nothing by stepping out your door and meeting people face to face and hearing what they do um, without selling yourself, but getting to know the city and getting to know the town and therefore the culture and how you fit in. Um, in terms of being a freelancer and working internationally, it's a really tricky thing and you need to be both tenacious and um, not give up. I guess that's the same thing, but also think creatively and know that there are ways to do things. You know, nothing is impossible and it just takes some effort and work to um, inspire yourself to figure things out creatively. So, um, you you know it's it's a it's a tricky situation with lawyers and laws but as an individual person know that you can figure it out it's totally doable i have some practical sort of tips for um being a freelancer because it is isolating and um it's hard to know it is hard to know where you stand in the marketplace in the big picture, I encourage you figure that out. But on a day-to-day -day situation, it's also very difficult to stay motivated and know what, what direction should I turn. So one of the things I say is do not compare um, your career, your business, or your talent with another talent. It's like golf where you're competing against yourself. Um, as a voice 
actor. You can listen to demos all day long and then you feel terrible about yourself. So if you're doing research about what other people are doing, that's fine, but do it quickly and get out because it can really eat away at your self-esteem in terms of well, where, where you stand or where you think you stand. People online, you know, we have this online presence that isn't the reality of who we are. And so that's um, difficult to remember definitely when things look so beautiful. Um, Another thing is treat yourself to career development workshops and training to always raise your game because there, you can't, you've got nothing to lose, but continuing to learn and how to improve yourself so that you can move forward. It's such a wonderful and magical thing when you get in that cycle of improving and training and it brings so much to your business. Um, that means coaching with different coaches as well. And I'm one to talk because I've only talked, uh, coached with a few, but I really recognize that um, each one has different, completely different wisdom, completely different techniques, all valuable, all helpful. You know, you take what you, you want and leave the rest, so to speak. But I dare say there isn't a coach out there you're going to learn something from and um, something different than what you have been learning. Another thing about working on your own, and these are all things that I've just kind of come up with myself, so I don't know if you know some of them are no-brainers or not, but um, be kind to yourself about the amount of hours that you work. Um, I have a family and pets and a husband that I want to keep, and so um, my schedule is dictated a lot by my family, but if I didn't have a family and I was by myself, I would work constantly. And I still try to do that. Sometimes I, I spent some time working evenings and weekends and I love it, but I wasn't being kind to myself um, because I wasn't taking care of myself in any other way. So that was not good. So as, as someone who works from home, you really need to be conscientious and conscious of how you're setting up your workday, your schedule, your um, environment, always thinking I could be doing this or that with the house or just working and then not, it takes a lot of balance. Um, and having said that, also leaving the home, leaving the office space and talking to other freelancers um, or someone, you know, freelancers in different industries or freelancers in your industry so that you feel supported and also you get out of your head and you can support someone else and be inspired by oh. them. There's, um, you have to really put a lot of thought into working from home, even though it sounds like the dream, it takes some effort to figure out personal balance more things um, to leave you with that I have found that have really worked with for me and that is to be meticulous about when communicating with clients um, and potential clients to be really brief and meticulous um, no spelling um, mistakes grammar perfect that's how I roll it works for me but also being really brief I find my clients really appreciate that um, for what you know and I don't even think they've said it out loud but I can just sense that you know my ability to be really quick with them uh, in terms of response, but also brief sentences to the point, no blah, 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 no extra stuff. I f felt that that's really helped me. Um, also, I'm all about productivity and organizing um, and always looking for new ways to do it better. But one of them is that if something's on your list and um, it's not getting done, it's because it's a project and not a task. And that things have to be broken down smaller, smaller, smaller um, in order to actually get them done. So that's pretty key for me. And my final bit of wisdom is that coming back to the beginning and trust and faith is that the universe always has my back. And to me, that's proven time and time again in terms of the amount of work that I receive. Um, if I need a bit of a break some days or if I'm going um, on vacation, um, you know, it doesn't always work out, but I know that the universe has my back in terms of how my clients respond to me. You know, I say I can do it next week. They're okay. And um, things always work out. They do. And, and I think that's due to my having faith that they will work out.